I know what you're thinking. Three gigabits was pretty darn good for the pie. Why go for more? Well, just like Jean-Louis Picard, I drink Earl Grey tea. Or, I mean, I wanted to boldly go where no one has gone before. I'm going to give a quick rundown on what I've been doing between my semi-clickbait title 5 gigabits Compute Module 4 video and today. Right after I posted that video, people told me to check the CPU usage, and I had actually done that originally, but apparently not very well. When I had checked, all I made sure of was that all four CPU cores weren't being maxed out. But what I missed was that it was maxing out one core, and the culprit was a process called KSoft IRQD, and that process is the process that ends up queuing network packets when the CPU just can't keep up anymore. And that means a single CPU core throttled the total network bandwidth, even if the CPU had more capacity available. So, quick idea, let's overclock the CPU. Well, I overclocked the CPU all the way to 2.147 GHz, which I thought was the maximum overclock, but I later found out is not. And it worked! I got 3.4 gigabits, and that was awesome! But I noticed that I could only get 3.2 gigabits through the four interfaces on the Intel card because I was literally maxing out the throughput of the PCI Express 2.0 one-lane bus on the Pi. So that meant the built-in gigabit network interface was only contributing about 200 megabits of its extra bandwidth before the CPU started choking it. So I started digging into some more exotic hacks to see if I could keep going beyond 3.4 gigabits. Now wait, I'm hearing you say, 3.4 gigabits is plenty for anyone. What are you going to use all this bandwidth for? Oh, I have plans. But also, why settle for 3.4 when you can go for more? So anyways, I tried a bunch of different things people suggested on GitHub, YouTube, and Hacker News. I first monitored the system interrupts using perf and ATOP to confirm that the IRQ interrupts were the main issue. I then tried using IP link set to increase the MTU to the maximum size on the Intel card so it could send larger packets, which would save the CPU from having to do so much processing. That worked, but I found out that I couldn't increase the MTU on the Raspberry Pi 4 side, at least not without recompiling the kernel, so I shelved that idea for the time being. I then tried manually changing the IRQ affinity for the network interfaces so they could split up their traffic processing on all the different CPU cores. This didn't work though because apparently the Broadcom PCIe driver doesn't support a special feature that would allow the interrupts to be split up. Special thanks to Green Reaper on GitHub for helping dig up that crazy bit of detail. So one CPU core is all I'm going to get, and I'm going to have to try to maximize all that limited amount of processing power to pump through these packets. So it's back to recompiling the Linux kernel. And since this would mark the eighth time I'd be recompiling the kernel in one week, I figured it was time to figure out how to cross-compile the kernel for my Mac for better speed. There are plenty of guides and tools to help you how to do it from Linux, but I didn't see any for how to do it on a Mac, so I made one. These are the times when a rational person might wonder, I started out on this journey two weeks ago and already proved I could get more than 3 gigabits by overclocking. What if all this extra work doesn't pay off and the time is wasted? Well, partner, time learning new things and stretching your brain is never time wasted. Anyways, I first tried to use Docker and failed because of some limitations with Docker for Mac and devices. So then I built a VirtualBox VM with Vagrant, then attached my USB card reader to the VM, then compiled Linux inside the VM and copied it over to the microSD card. This was all a bit complicated, so I wrote up a whole blog post on the process. I won't bore you with the details in this video. Click on the card above if you want to learn how to do it all yourself. Anyways, after all that, and after endless discussion on YouTube, Hacker News, and GitHub, I finally patched the Linux kernel to use 9000 for the MTU for the internal Ethernet interface on all four Pi 4s, and then ran the benchmark again, and I still only got 3.4 gigabits! You gotta be kidding! Well, I should mention this was late in the day, and my brain apparently stops working after I spend a whole weekend making three videos about the Pi 400. So later that night, when my brain finally started working again, I realized I hadn't reset the MTU on the Intel card, so I had to do that again. I did it, confirmed the MTU was set to 9000 on both ends of the network connections this time, and ran the benchmark again. And this time, I got 4.15 gigabits. 
Yes, as I said in the last video, my goal is four gigabits, and now I finally got four gigabits. Even though the PCI Express bus got saturated at 3.2 gigabits, the internal ethernet on the Compute Module 4 was finally able to use all its bandwidth, increasing the total beyond four gigabits. I could even push it a tiny bit further if I increased the Compute Module's MTU beyond the default 1500, but it was late and I wanted to move on to some other tests. So to celebrate this victory, I grabbed a fresh Diet Dr. Pepper, cracked it open, and took a drink. Because I have finally proven that you can get more than 4 gigabits per second on the Raspberry Pi. You know what? This is a great moment for Raspberry Pis everywhere, and I can't leave Redshirt Jeff out of the celebration. I'll let him finish cutting through that Raspberry Pi. You do you, Redshirt Jeff. Anyways, in the end, to get this done, I had to recompile the Pi kernel so the built-in Ethernet could use 9000 MTU so it could send more data in fewer packets. I had to overclock the Compute Module 4 to 2.2 GHz, and I had to install the Linux drivers for the Intel i340. And as with all my work, everything I did and all the code I used, including a fully automated Ansible playbook that runs the iPerf benchmark on all five interfaces, is available in an open source code repository on GitHub linked in the description. So what's next? How about turning it up to 10? I'm going to take this 10 gig card and see if I can get it working in the Pi. I'm also going to try to get another GPU working. Why? Well, because I can, and because it's fun to try. See you in the comments, subscribe, and until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. Three gigabytes, three gigabytes, nope. I'm gonna give, give oh, the MTU on the Intel card. Intel, ho, 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 ho. I first monitored, uh, click on the card above if you wanna learn, learn uh, man. Even though the PCI Express got bus, oh, fully automated Ansible playbook that runs the iPorf, oh, iPorf, not again and ran the bench